So at the Consumer Electronics Show this year, uh, home automation was a big deal, and, and Google just bought Nest for three something billion dollars, uh, which proves that the space is interesting both to investors and to users. What really is going on is the price is coming down and the geeky level is coming down. So normal people can afford uh, all sorts of new digital devices in their home and you don't need to be a programmer to figure out how to set them all up like a lot of my rich friends had to hire to get home automation working. Well here People Power has a new way to control all these new digital devices. We're going to hear about it right now. Hey, who are you? I'm Gene Wong. I'm the CEO and co-founder of People Power, and uh, it's great to be here. I, I really, uh, I really uh, love being at People Power. It's my fifth startup, so I'm a so-called serial entrepreneur. Um, I've actually been CEO four times now. Uh, my first company, Computer Motion, did medical robots for surgery and was able to take that to a successful IPO. And then we were acquired by a huge company called Intuitive Surgical, which is yep. used uh, everywhere for minimally invasive surgery. Yep. Uh, my second company, uh, Photo Access, we made a very high speed digital camera chip and a whole photo pr printing backend. Agilent bought us for the hardware group. And then American Greetings actually still runs the photo printing service, so that was, uh, that was a good one. And uh, my last company, Bitphone, sold to HP for $160 million, uh, 2007, and we were the leading provider of mobile phone device management software. Uh, we powered over 200 million phones. We powered some of the world's largest networks, including China Mobile, China Unicom, and T-Mobile. And that team actually came with me after we escaped from HP uh, to People Power. And at People Power, we're empowering people to control all kinds of things from their smartphones. And so, you know, did I nail the, the uh, trend right that, that there is something going on in home automation and we're getting lots of new devices? I have little uh, Philips LED lights in my house and I have drop, drop cam, which watches my, my front door. And I, I have a Nest thermostat and a smoke detector. I, I, there's something happening here, right? Absolutely. I think you're, you're right on, Robert. You know, it's a huge trend. Finally, you know, the, the field of Internet of Things, home automation has been really talked about for decades. But I think at CES this year, it was just really a huge wave of innovation. We're really excited about it. What People Power is doing that's a little different is we're pioneering a freemium model for home automation. One of the reasons why our killer app called Presence has been taking off like a rocket is anybody can download it free on the App Store and get going, and it does built-in home monitoring. So, you know, Dropcam is a great product, and I also love my Nest, but, you know, those are kind of expensive, and uh, if you if you have a, have a smartphone, if you have an iPhone that's kind of just lying around, you can set it up as a free Wi-Fi video camera with built-in motion detection. And then from wherever you are, you can see what's going on in your house. You can uh, track your kids or your pets or your elderly relatives who you worry about or your stuff. And, uh, you know, starts free and then you can expand. So that's, that's really how we're... Uh, differentiating. Cool, and a lot of people have old old smartphones lying around uh, that probably fit the, the bill for a good uh, cheap Wi-Fi camera, right? Exactly, exactly. In fact, the great thing is these are fantastic cameras. You know, the economies of scale are so, so favoring companies like Apple and Samsung and some of the giants that uh, you just get an amazing camera uh, and, if, and it's probably just sitting in your drawer already. So, uh, it's 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 really something that's taking off. Now you brought a lot of little toys in here. What, uh, uh, what what did you bring us here, and how does this fit with your app? Yeah. So one of the things that we we have is I can be actually controlling my phone from my hand, and so basically you can see here 
This is the Galileo robot, and I can basically control 360 degree view. I can look up and down, um, and basically, you know, wherever I am, I can have the ability to control my device. Uh, this is a, an add in product that, if you, this is the presence application, and if we uh, if we go to the store, you can see that we have this device here, the Galileo, yep. and it basically sells for $129, and we just add it into Presence. Presence basically views it right away, and then you can control it. Now, do I buy these th things from Presence, or do I buy these things from Amazon? You can buy these things from Presence, and that way you know that they're, they're going to they're gonna be... Uh, versions that work with our system, you can also buy them from Amazon, of yeah. course. And then how do you hook them into, uh, into your app? And how, what did you have to do? Because I, I have a box called Revolve, which actually has nine radios and grabs control of all sorts of stuff like this and then puts it in a single app. I, I guess that would be a competitor of what you're trying to do, right? Well, I think the, the Revolve Hub, which sounds interesting, I haven't actually uh, had a chance to try it. I really like their idea of having multiple radios. I mean, that, that makes yeah. a ton of sense. This is just using uh, things like Wi-Fi. Uh, the People Power uh, platform supports many network protocols, but we are a pure software and mobile app play. We, our business is to connect with lots of different kinds of devices but bring a great user experience, bring it right into the smartphone. Okay. So uh, we, we would tend to want to partner with companies like Revolve and, and uh, uh, other larger companies, you know, some of the you know, name brand type companies. Uh, we do have here a monster smart plug from the folks who, uh, who make the, the headphones mm -hmm. and they have monster power. And so, for example... So this is an internet-controlled uh, smart plug, so you could turn on and off your TV or your lights from, from the internet, right, from your app. That's, that's exactly right, and in fact, that's a great use case you just mentioned, Robert. I have one of these in my, hooked up to my entertainment center, and every night at midnight, you know, my TV, my Wii game console, and my uh, DVD player uh, flips off, and then every morning uh, it turns back on and I save a third of my standby power that's otherwise wasted because I don't feel like unplugging those devices from the wall every night. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, that a, 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 an amplifier or a TV are actually uh, using a little power even when they're switched off. Right? They're using a lot of power. I, I figure I save about 75 or $80 a year just by, just, just through managing the standby power like that. And how much did this device cost? So uh, a starter kit is, uh, is 99 bucks. Um, we, we sometimes run specials. Now uh, additional plugs will cost more like 60 bucks. Okay. So the starter kit contains a bridge which uh, connects into your home router. Yep. And then let me just show you how easy it is to set one of these things up. Yeah. So I can, uh, I can simply go to device, and as you see, I, I have a couple of these monster plugs here already, one on my front light, one on my entertainment center, but let's say I wanted to actually add a new device. What I can do is I can just scan a barcode, which is at the back of each of these, each of these devices. Yeah. Just get, put it down here. Yeah. Okay, and now it's, it's actually paired my, my plug um, to my system. Yep. So let me actually just plug in this light here so you can see that it's controlling something. Just uh, plug in this light here. Now if I, if I go to this monster plug, I can just uh, flip it on. And you can see that this light just turned on instantly. Yep. And uh, of course, I can turn it, turn it back off if I can get my finger around there. You can see that I can, I can have a, um, I can have a high, uh, I can have a gauge that 
tracks the consumption. Yep. It actually, the, the meter lags by a few seconds, the, the on off, but yep. I can now turn it back on and you can see that in a, in a couple seconds that my uh, meter will then increase to $6.57 a month. In other words, if I just this leave light this light on for a month, it's costing me, you know, six fifty-seven. Which, which is, uh, you know, if you think about all the lights that you may leave on at at night or when nobody's in the room, it can really add up. Yeah. Now we can also just um, see how many watts. This is a seventy-five watt bulb, so I'm consuming seventy seventy-five watts here. Yeah. And the other thing that we can do here is we have a full-on rules engine within our system. And so I can just go to the rules engine and I can just add a rule. So for example, if I just add a rule, I get this nice little if this then that yeah. type of uh, UI where clicking on this, I can say if the time is, let's say, uh, yeah. one forty. 6 p.m. a couple of minutes from now and I can say and this and that and this and that uh, then what I want to do is I want to for example tell my monster central plug to switch off yep. and that's all there is to it after I say yes I am uh, I am uh, in uh, west coast time here yep. now if we just kind of hang out a little bit um, this this light will will flip off and that's how I have my entertainment center set up. But one of the great things about the, the People Power Presence app is that it expands to support all kinds of devices that you can add in. Because, of course. Give me some other examples of other devices that we, sure. could, we could go buy and put in, your, in our home. Sure. So, one example that I, that I showed you was camera and yeah. camera as iPhone. So, if I detect motion, if, if, it's, if it's 10 p.m. at night and I detect a car driving down the driveway, then turn on the light. If I detect that everybody is gone from the house, then turn everything off, that kind of thing. Yeah. Now, we do have a number of, uh, of other devices that I brought along to, to show yeah, you. Give me a sense of what other kinds of things that can be controlled from your app. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is one such device. This is a Blue Line Innovations meter reader that turns a dumb meter into a smart meter. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what this device does is it, it, is it actually, you take this thing and you, you slide it over that round glass uh, casing outside mm -hmm. your house that houses your your electricity meter. By the way, the notice that the light just uh, turned off yep. based on that rule firing. So this goes over your PG&E meter or your power meter on your house. Now, a lot of people are getting uh, PG&E here in, in San Francisco is putting a smart meter in the house. Right? Exactly. Does this work with that? Well, you don't, so we, we actually have been a real pioneer in the area of what is called green button, if you're familiar with that. No. So Green Button is actually a, a White House initiative to get all of the utilities to provide for their consumers the ability where if the consumer presses the Green Button, they get their energy data. Okay. Now, strangely enough, it comes down in the form of, uh, of uh, you know, a CSV file with tons and tons of data, nobody's that interested, but what yeah. we do is we turn that into something that is, is very easy to, to read and understand, and we can tell you in real time what your energy uh, consumption is as related to your budget. So okay. you could say, you know, I'm only going to spend $120 a month, and now you, can, you get a red light or yellow light or, or, or green light, depending on if you've already blown your budget, if you're at risk of blowing your budget, or if you're cool for the month, okay. so that type of thing. Cool. What other devices do you bring? So we also have this. Um, we also have this uh, wireless thermostat, uh, thermostat mm -hmm. where I must admit it's not nearly as cool as my Nest. I have two thermostats in my house, yep. but you know uh, it is is a lot cheaper. Yep. 
So this thing is like 99 bucks as opposed to 250 bucks. Yep. And you know, some people have more than one thermostat, of course, in their house. So it can really, it can really, uh, can really save. Can you also take control of a nest with this, with this app? Or now, the I you know before the Google acquisition for congratulations 3.2 billion dollars, um, the answer is. Nest had announced that they were opening up their API. Mm -hmm. I would assume that that is still going to happen because Google is kind of that kind of open API So company. what do I so need to look at to know that the device will work with, with your app or the People Power app? We are, we are going to be you know, adding devices that we support to our store and publishing them on the web. Okay. But I will say that underlying our apps, we essentially, the thing of value that we've built Robert, is, is really what we call the IOE platform. The IOE platform, or Internet of Everything platform, okay. is something where we, if you go to um, developer.peoplepowerco.com, you can see all of our APIs. Developers can freely use those and then connect their connected devices that way, or we can we can actually do that for them. Do you control Sonos, for instance? We don't control Sonos. Okay. No. Do you control uh, Philips LED light bulbs? That is that is something that we do plan to uh, to control. That's and how about thing. the new locks? And because like because they've opened up their APIs recently. Okay. How about uh, Lockatron locks? The, the the new kinds of internet locks that people are starting. To we were demonstrating control of uh, Simplicity locks, mm -hmm. which are kind of like Lockatron locks. Okay. Uh, we haven't we haven't actually run into uh, Lockatron, but that that would be a good okay. thing to add too. Cool. What, this is this is basically yeah. This is basically how I can actually control my thermostat from my hand. Mm -hmm. um, that actually just happened at my house. Uh, I also want to just quickly show you. This is how much my home is consuming right at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I can see that so far this month, being early in the month, I've, I've spent $61.98. I'm paying $0.12 cents per kilowatt hour, yep. and I can get that in watts as well as in dollars. And then I can see uh, what my consumption is by hour of the day, or over a week, or over a month. Yep. I can actually run my finger across this and see how much I'm spending, yeah. and then finally, uh, I get this. I'm in, uh, you know, yellow light. So if I keep spending at this rate, I could blow my budget. So, yeah. got to be Which careful. Which makes about sense because it's colder in the winter, so you make it back during the summer. Um, so if I buy all these devices, how, how much does your app cost, and what 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 do I what do I need to pay up for on your app versus buying the the actual physical devices? Yeah, so our app uh, presence is free. Download it, and you can immediately get up, up, up and running with the home video monitoring system, assuming that you have two two uh, devices like a you know iPad or yep. uh, I, iPhone. Um, then you <coughs> can upgrade your system by buying stuff in the store. And basically, right, it's the it's, same. Let's assume I bought all this stuff somewhere else on Amazon. How much do I have to pay for you to hook it in? Uh, you do I have to pay to hook it into my uh, app, or how do you guys get paid? So other than just selling the devices. So I guess one thing is we we cannot guarantee that anything you, that you buy on Amazon will be compatible with our app. Okay. So let me start out there, but. On the other hand, if you, for example, bought a, a Galileo on Amazon, mm -hmm. um, it very likely would just plug in and work and you'd just be able to do exactly what I was, what I was doing earlier. So you don't have in-app in -app purchasing and of, the, of the software link. Your, your business model is to sell the device itself and compete with Amazon on selling devices, right? Our, our business model is to compete with Amazon by building an app that provides a re universal remote controller for many Wait, kinds of things working together. I, I understand that. Where do you get paid? So we, we get paid uh, 
when you when you purchase these devices. Right. And we, we so will you're be competing with Amazon and I'm not gonna I'm probably not gonna buy these things from you. I'm gonna buy them all over the place. I might go to Fry's and see something cool and, and it, I'll look in the store and see if it works. Do you charge an in app purchase price to hook that new device that I just bought bought somewhere else? We don't. Okay. So we you, don't. So you're hoping I buy it from you and not from Amazon. Is, so you're competing well, with Amazon. Uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of crazy to, to think that we're competing with Amazon. I wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't, in fact, we're talking to Amazon right now. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't position, okay. I certainly don't feel like we're competing with Amazon. Yeah. But on the other hand, we do have a, a killer app that's growing like every, you know, we were just selected by USA Today. No, I, I get the app is cool. Apps. The app is cool. And so the idea is that yeah. you can build out the ecosystem of smart devices and, you know, other, other devices include this occupancy sensor, yeah. which we were demonstrating at CES. Yeah. This heat. I just wanted to make sure sensor. if I bought some other devices somewhere else, uh, I wanted to know how much I was going to get charged by hooking them into your app. So uh, it's yeah. clear it's not. I'm not going to get charged. It's you, the price is your right. Your business model is different. The price is right. Yeah. Okay. How do you guys get funded? How do, who funded you? And how, tell me about the business behind this, the company. Yeah. So we um, we have been funded through uh, about six and a half million dollars of venture capital. Mm -hmm. um, Mostly from, you know, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I've actually made, made some money for yep. my previous investors. Uh, and I've made some money on my own yep. that, uh, that I've put into the company. Mostly we're funded through revenue. Yep. So we, you know, we, we uh, basically turns out that in this world, a lot of people build these connected devices. It's really yep. becoming very popular. Yep. On the other hand, some of the people who are building these connected devices aren't experts in mobile killer yep. apps as well as cloud-based services that connect to that mobile framework. Yep. And so we are, we, are, you know, we are not only building a system that we can offer to end users and they, they're really loving it, but we're also talking to many of the largest companies yep. on the planet how who many want people to offer work, this. How many people work for you? Uh, our core team has 22 people. Very cool. Yeah, our uh, you know our extended team has 35 people. Yeah. So it depends on how you how you count, but uh, you know we have a very focused group of 22 oh, that's cool. people who are moving things nice. forward every day. Nice. I'm gonna try it out. I, I got a bunch of these devices already, so thanks. I'm try them out. All right. Well, Fantastic. thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming by and sure. talking about this world. Do you? Uh, you know, it, it makes sense that uh, since Nest went for $3.2 billion, uh, that, that other companies are going to need these kinds of control features in the home. Uh, makes sense. It, it seems like you're positioned well for a, another acquisition because there's other companies out there who uh, are going to be woken up by what Google's doing. Exactly. And, uh, and, uh, exactly. And, you know, that's, that's really one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm very very interested in is building something that is best of class that uh, that that really brings the internet of things to a common consistent unified user experience for the end user yeah. and then you know bringing that to the world and I think one of these big companies is going to go gee you know I really like that yeah. you know it's it starts free it's so easy to install, it's very inexpensive to run, and it supports my broad portfolio of devices better than I could do myself, or at least in, in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, you know, I, I, I have managed to, to have successful acquisitions for my last three companies, and I see that this is the next wave of the internet. Yep. Where do we learn more about it? Yeah, so you can go to uh, peoplepowerco.com and you could also go to presencepro.com and uh, see more focus on presence. Very um, cool. You're on both the, iPhone and Android or just iPhone right now? We, we, are, uh, we have shipped a number of uh, uh, award-winning Android apps. Presence, we showed the beta of our Android version at CES. But uh, we haven't released presence for Android. But for example, we've released uh, the Monster app 
the, the, the dedicated monster app is on Android, as an example. We also won the AT&T. But presence is coming for Android Presence is coming for Android later this year. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome.